Hello beautiful souls, my name is Jessie and welcome back to another episode of Rewired to Inspire. This show where we'll dive into self-love, learn tangible ways to rewire the brain and discovering your soul's purpose. The goal of Rewired to Inspire is to encourage listeners to begin doing the hard work, to get curious and open to maximizing your life. Our mindset shapes how we live. Depending on life events, traumas, and personal experiences, our mindsets are all vastly different. However, one thing we all have in common is the ability to rewire our mind, to change the narrative, and to pivot our lives. I hope you leave each episode with the belief that you are so worthy to live a life true to you. I look forward to chatting with you every single Tuesday and Thursday and helping you grow exponentially in all areas of your life. Without further ado, here's today's episode. Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to my podcast, Rewire to Inspire. I am your host, Jesse Brown, and I am thrilled to be jumping on the mic with you all today. If this is your first time finding this podcast, tuning in, I welcome you with open arms and I am so excited to have you here. In this podcast, we are going to be diving deep into some psychology. So this is an episode that I'm very, very excited to share with you all and one that I hope hits on a deep level for you guys and allows you to begin to think differently. As always with my podcast, my goal is to encourage my listeners to do the deep work, to get to know themselves, to get to know how the mind and the body works because we live in a world where if we don't go out and eagerly search to find answers to these things, we'll often go our whole lives not knowing a lot about ourselves. And the thing is, is we only know as much as we are taught or as much as we go and learn. And I think that today's episode ties very, very deeply into that. And so for this episode, number 53, we are going to be diving into a term called neuroplasticity and what it is and why it's so important. And this episode is one that I wanted to release shortly after I did my name change of Rewired to Inspire because my podcast is all about our our ability to rewire the brain. But I think it's important to preface the psychology behind rewiring the brain, how it's actually possible and how it's possible for you. Because I used to do a lot of work in the trauma recovery field with my clients and we focused largely on psychoeducation, which was giving that education backstory awareness on what it is that happens to your mind and body after trauma. And my goal for today's episode is to educate you all on the psychology behind the brain and how we're always able to learn and to grow, but how we often think sometimes that we end our learning at a certain age. And I want to break that bulk for you guys and just break that misconception because it's so possible to continue to learn new things. And I want to instill that belief in you by giving you hardwired scientific psychological proof that it is so possible. It is possible for you. It is possible for me, but we just have to have the right mindset in order for that to happen. So welcome. I am so excited to have you guys here. And without further ado, let's dive into episode 53 and learn a little bit about the brain and neuroplasticity together. So for today's episode, I'm super, super pumped to dive into two of my favorite things to talk about and just two of the things that I'm most passionate about, and that's mindset versus psychology. Because we often think on the surface level, and I I hear this all the time because I also used to believe that we are who we are and we know what we know and there's no way that we're able to change. And once we reach a certain age, that's when our brain kind of stops learning and we learn everything when we're younger, whatever it is. And we may think that we are who we are and that we know what we know, but I'm here to tell you that that's so wrong. And if that were true, there would really be no point of me having a a podcast and spreading education. There would really be no point on there being documentaries. There would really be no point of there being university of books, of having all those things if it were true that we weren't able to learn new things. And the phrase growth mindset, that is something that I am very, very passionate about. I am passionate about evolving and stepping up and rewiring the brain so that we're able to change our mindset and just having a growth mindset in life. And so the phrase growth mindset, it refers to the idea that you can always change and grow. And the word neuroplasticity refers to the brain's ability to change and grow over time when exposed to learning new things. And so you can see by just those things that you can connect the concepts by just saying that a growth mindset encourages you to try new things, which in hindsight improves the brain's functions. And so basically what all that means is 
our brain's ability to rewire itself and to change and to adapt is very, very closely tied into a growth mindset. And if we have a growth mindset and we're eager to go out and learn and try new things and adapt, that is improving our neuroplasticity. And if you're still wondering what the heck I'm talking about, what neuroplasticity is, that is exactly what we are going to dive into next. And so I learned about neuroplasticity when I was taking psychology, when I was studying social work. And when I first heard the word, I thought it was so, so interesting. And I just kept thinking of like this elastic band that just has so much ability to expand and to adapt and to expand and to adapt. And that's exactly what neuroplasticity is. And so it's derived from two different words. So it's derived from the word neuro, which means nervous system, which our nervous system is our brain, our spinal cord, and all of the nerves that send messages to and from the brain. And plasticity, which means plasto in Greek, means moldable. And so plasticity means moldable. And so you put those words together, neuroplasticity basically means a moldable brain. And so this was introduced by an Italian psychiatrist named, I'm never going to say this word right, but we're going to try, Ernesto Lugaro in 1906. And this was introduced before that, that I'll get into in a moment. But he basically described the term of how the brain can change throughout life and how we're able to adapt and learn and recover and how our brain has the ability to do that. And this was actually debunked two years before that in 1904. And this was who I studied in psychology. And that was by a Russian psychologist named Ivan Pavlov, who you've probably heard of before. And his experiment was basically whenever he would feed a dog, he would ring a bell. And so he was basically rewiring the brain that every time they heard the bell, they would start to salivate right? Because they knew that food was beginning to approach. And this is kind of largely tied into also classical conditioning, which was experiments done of feeding or giving a treat and hearing the bell. So whenever they heard the bell, they would associate that with food. So it's kind of the same thing. And it's basically your brain beginning to associate an action with a stimuli, right? So you're able to correlate those things together. And so it basically just shows that over time of doing a repetitive action, your brain will learn to adapt of hearing certain stimuli to respond in a certain action. And the super interesting thing about this is that we all have experiences with neuroplasticity every single day and we don't even realize that it's happening. Because fun fact in hindsight, it's happening right now through you listening to this. While you're listening to this, your brain is sending out receptors. It's picking up information. It's it's connecting the dots of where you've maybe heard this in your life. Maybe you're starting to think of something else in your life. And all those times that neurons are fired, that's basically new neural pathways and new messages being sent to begin to connect the dots. And this all happens so subconsciously in our brain, which is so, so interesting to think about. And so, again, every time we learn something new, we are harvesting the power of neuroplasticity. And I want you to think back to, because I remember this was something I used to do with my mom and dad a lot of times when I was in grade school and I had a test coming up. Think about if you're sitting in a class and I remember this big in biology, we'd have to study Latin and learn how to spell certain words in Latin. And so I would write them down on a cue card and I would get my mom to read them and I would have to give the definition and how to spell it, what the word would be in English or what the definition would be. And so when we would do those flashcards in the beginning, if I was sitting in class and my teacher said, we have a test tomorrow and you have to learn 20 of the 50 words. And so I knew I'd have to go study 50 words. And in the beginning, of course, we don't really know what they are because it's new to us. But as I would start to go through the cue cards and associate the word and I would see it and it would be repetitive and there would be a visual. And my mom would also often correlate a word with something that like kind of rhymes with it. So I would begin to remember That was my brain's way of beginning to adapt and rewire and to see things repetitively because that is exactly what neuroplasticity is. It's a repetitive habit, behavior, learned action that we are then able to lay that foundation down to remember and learn a new skill. And so then when I would go in to do my test, I would have already, I can almost visualize the cue card in my head, visualize or hear my mom's voice, hear those tricks that she had taught me. And so that is a really great example of neuroplasticity of when we're back in school, but know that this happens every single day. And that's why I was so pumped to come on here with this episode, because I just want to give the permission that our brain is always evolving. Our brain is always trying to take in new information, 
But if we have a fixed mindset and we just think that we are the way that we are, we're not going to go out and try to find new ways to expand our mind, expand our knowledge, expand our awareness. And I think that that's when we become very stuck in our mindset, in our ways, in our actions, in our habits, is because we've, we've caused our brain to almost mold and form into that. But having a growth mindset is our ability to just see things beyond what they are, to be able to look at things deeper on a deeper, deeper level, which is in hindsight going to expand our neuroplasticity. So that is my goal for today's episode is for listeners to begin to correlate those two together of why having a growth mindset is not only beneficial just for life and skills and to empower and break through and be successful, but it's also for our brain's health and to optimize the capability that our brain has because we really don't take full potential of all that our brain has to offer because we just don't know and have the understanding that it's possible. Because if we think about Pavlo's dogs and that experiment of ringing the bell and waiting for the dog to salivate, you and I and the dog really all have the same things in common. We are all exposed to to a stimulus, right? With enough repetition and intensity, we're able to rewire brain function. Neuroplasticity basically equals learning, right? And there's that sentence, you can teach an, uh, an old dog new tricks. And it's so true because you can, because of neuroplasticity, right? And the thing about neuroplasticity is that it takes place daily, regardless of your age and of your health. If you have a heart beating and you are here and you are alive, neuroplasticity is taking place whether you realize it's happening or not. And the term neuroplasticity refers to the concept that your brain can change over time. And for a long time, people thought that the brain stopped developing at a certain age. And now that there's more research coming out and we're finding new things and psychologists are studying this, we're realizing that the brain can grow and change no matter what age you are. And it's actually quite interesting because it happens in three different stages. And I was doing research for today's episode because neuroplasticity is something that I've always been very interested in and very passionate about because I remember even just having clients that felt like they were at their wit's end or felt like they had nothing left to offer or felt like their brain and their body was just out to get them. And whenever I was able to explain the psychology behind the fact that our brain isn't out to get us, our brain is there to protect us. And I'm going to do an episode about how trauma and neuroplasticity can begin to fight against each other because when our cognitive brain and our hippocampus are at fight or at wars with themselves, that's when we can begin to feel really disconnected. And that's when we need to bring our nervous system back on. Because if our nervous system has been shut off by trauma, it's going to be really hard for our brain to begin to rewire because we're stuck and it doesn't feel safe. But so again, stay tuned for that episode because I really want to go deep dive into that because I understand that by saying all these things, there can definitely be deeper rooted things causing us to become stuck. But the thing is, is that they happen in stages. And whenever I was able to educate my clients on that, of saying that it's going to come in stages of feeling our emotions, doing it in a safe place. And a great place to start is by just getting comfortable in your body, getting comfortable feeling grounded. And that can take a long time. But even through that, neuroplasticity is happening. Learning is happening. Rewiring and sending off new neurons is happening. And so this happens in three stages. The first stage is that you may first experience a chemical change in the brain when trying something new. Think of a time that you've tried something new and you either felt defeated or you felt joy or you wanted to do it again or Whatever emotion you had, you felt that emotion because there was something in your brain that sent a message. It clicked something. It triggered something. The second change that happens is that your brain may then continue into psychological changes the longer that you engage in learning and skill building. Over time, neurons can create new connections and change the structure of your brain. So it's exactly as I just mentioned. As you try something new, once those chemicals are released, those neurons are then looking for a place to go. And so we used to do this thing called neurooptimal at my last job, which is basically, I'm going to explain this to best, the best of my ability. I'm definitely not an expert on this tool, but basically in hindsight, what it means is we have these little things that we would connect to our client's head and it's, it's nothing intense. It is a couple cords, but basically just think of like these sticky things that are stuck behind your ears and on your head. And while the client is sitting there, it's playing calm music. 
And as it's sending these neurons through these machines, what it's doing is it's causing these fires of neurons. And because when trauma happens or life events happen, our neurons get stuck. They get stuck in our brain. And when this happens, they have troubleshoot firing in a different direction. And so that's why we often get stuck and we're doing the same things over and over again. It's because our neurons almost become trapped. And so through Neuroptimal, and I definitely encourage you to watch a video on Neuroptimal. It's super, super educational and just something, a tool that I think all counselors and therapists should use. But it allows the brain the ability to resend out new fires, send out new neurons to, con- to begin to create new pathways. And which is so interesting because that's the second change that happens. But again, those key words, it happens over time. And it happens through engaging in learning and skill building. I think of, let's say, a sport, for example. Your first practice when you were four years old compared to when you're 16 at your last practice, there's a vast difference there. Your brain has begun to learn new skills to do, new tricks to do, right? Motor skills, our ability, our physical ability, our mental ability, everything begins to rewire itself and to connect based on our experiences. So you can see that this can be positive experiences and negative experiences because we can really easily become stuck in negative experiences if we've been stuck there for a long time. And so the third change that can happen is that your brain becomes stronger and more active the longer you engage in the behavior. So I'm going to read through those three again super quickly of the changes that happen in stages. So the first one, You may experience chemical changes in the brain when trying something new. Number two, your brain may then continue into physical changes the longer you engage in learning and skill building. Over time, neurons can create new connections and change the structure of the brain. And number three, your brain becomes stronger and more active the longer you engage in those behaviors. So basically what that's saying is you experience something new, you have changes, The longer that you do it and that you stick with it, you will see a result, which is really the framework of anything in life. Practice something, practice again, hone in on it, improve outcome, right? And so the framework of this is just knowing that this happens all the time in our life. It happens all the time and we think that it can't happen. And so we don't take action, which in hindsight is the biggest disadvantage in just setback that we can do for ourselves because if we've already identified that there's no point of doing something because we can't learn it then we're going to be stuck right there and I hear that so much with older generations of saying well I just am who I am and I know the things I know and what's the point because whatever but that goes down back to that piece of growth mindset if we've already told ourselves that we're not going to do something we're not going to take action and we're not going to see proof and I wanted to give the psychology behind why it's possible and how it's possible to debunk that myth because it's just that it's a myth what we believe is true is what we will allow to be true and if we believe that we are infinitely possible to learn new things and take on new skills guess what we're going to get creative and we're going to get resourceful and we're going to become obsessed with learning and growing because as i've started to adopt a more positive mindset and a growth mindset I'm telling you right now, it becomes like an addiction. You just want to grow and listen and evolve. And and then through that, my purpose is to educate that to other people, to give other folks permission that it's possible because it's so, so beyond possible. But so now let's, let's begin to connect my name of my podcast, Rewire to Inspire. Let's begin to connect those two words. Rewiring the brain would be the neuroplasticity. The, re, the inspire piece would be the positive mindset. So you can adopt a growth mindset at any point in your life. Taking in new experiences and adopting new abilities is how our growth mindset can begin to increase and how we can begin to increase that neuroplasticity. And so I hope you guys are are sitting there and just thinking to yourself, huh, like, wow, that's pretty empowering to hear that. If I want to make shifts in my life and, and I want to make a difference in my life and I'm ready to learn a new skill, I have that ability within me. And even just that small little ounce of belief is a huge stride forward to take action. And I wanted to dive into some benefits of neuroplasticity as well as some ways that we can begin to rewire the brain to increase neuroplasticity. Because I want you to think of it like a never-ending journey, a never-ending opportunity to just become the best version of yourself because there's no limit to neuroplasticity, which is 
such an interesting, fascinating thing that there's no cap on how much we can learn, how much we can evolve, how much we can grow, which means we can just stretch that and expand that and learn things and, and rewire old narratives we may have had and just keep growing from that. And so some benefits of neuroplasticity, so in hindsight, learning is that we're able to, and these aren't guarantees, these are just things that I found when doing research of ways that neuroplasticity can improve our brain. Again, this is not a guarantee, but over time, these are things that are proven to help our brain through neuroplasticity. And so recovering from things like a stroke, anything to do with brain events, right? Recovering from traumatic brain injury, the ability to rewire functions in the brain, to enhance our memory ability, wide range of enhanced cognitive abilities, more effective learning, right? These are all the benefits of neuroplasticity and just having that understanding of wanting to do the work to grow our brain. And you might be wondering, okay, that's awesome. What are ways that I can do this? What are ways that I can begin to grow my brain, stretch it out to be more of that growth mindset, expand my neuroplasticity? And again, think of it like a muscle. Our brain is literally a muscle. It is designed to be pumped and worked out the same as our muscles. Our brain is no different. But when we get to certain ages and let's just say we're doing the same job for the next 20 years, there's not very many parts of our brains that are going to have to think differently or are going to have to think outside the box or is going to have to get creative because we're doing the same thing. And so I want to give these tangible ways of ways to increase neuroplasticity to just show that if you feel like you've been stuck or you're bored, maybe it's time for you to challenge your thoughts, challenge your abilities, getting outside your comfort zone in a way that expands who you are. You know, we're not just, and again, I'm, I'm going to get into a little bit how passionate I am that we're all here for a purpose and we're all here for a reason. But I also am passionate about knowing that we cap our potential so quickly because we don't think that we have the ability to do any different. But again, if we've already told ourselves that we don't have the ability to do something, we're not going to take action. And so these are a couple ways that we can begin to take action to not only grow our neuroplasticity and our growth, but also to give us a form of just self-worth, self-love, self-confidence. Because if we can prove to our mind that we can do hard things and we can stick with them and we can grow from them and get better at them, it feels really, really good. Studying for those tests and then going and doing the tests and doing phenomenal at it, remember that feeling. But don't lose touch with that feeling. Just because there's no test at the end of something doesn't mean that we can't still have that feel-good moment. Because we can test ourselves every day. We can be competitive with ourselves every day. And that's like the best way that we can be competitive is with our own self. How can we improve by 1% every single day to become the best version of ourself? And I think self-competitiveness is so underrated, but it's one of the best ways to increase our self-worth and pour into our identity that can then begin to really shift our life and our trajectory. And so some ways that we can begin to increase neuroplasticity is to, A, the first one I have is, Explore yourself to, or sorry, expose yourself to new environments. You know, I really think that during the pandemic and staying at home and staying in the same space, really doing the same things, really caused a lot of us to shrink down and shrivel down to the point that we've forgotten about our potential and forgotten that it's possible because we were forced to stay in our environments and forced to do the same things for so long. Right. And I think a lot of us have become stuck in that more than we've maybe even realized. And so the more that we can expose ourselves to new environments, so maybe that's traveling to a new place, maybe that's going to a coffee shop, maybe that's going for a walk in the woods, maybe that's getting around a certain group of people, maybe that's going to an event and mingling with folks, whatever it is, getting yourself to a new environment allows your mind to just look around and take in new information and adapt and just learn different things. Because even if we're not cognitively realizing all our brain is taking in, every time we go into a new building, a new place, a new surrounding, our mind is scanning that whole environment. It is picking up on so much stimuli around us because it has to, because that's its job, right? 
That's our amygdala's job is to scan around us to look for threats, but it's also scanning to adapt to see what's around us. And so getting into new environments is greatly, greatly impactful, positively impactful on neuroplasticity. The second one is one that I absolutely love, and that's to do like little memory games or Sudoku or just things that allow your brain to think. Allowing ourselves to think for a second. I hear this all the time in the workplace now of people saying, ugh, math, like grab a calculator, right? We've, we've become so resourceful to the point that we're not even allowing our mind the ability to do things. And again, if we don't practice math, we're going to lose it. If you learned to speak another language in school and you don't practice it, odds are six years later, you've forgotten that language. Because if we don't practice things and do them often, which is exactly what neuroplasticity is, we will forget them. We will lose touch with them. And that's why I see so many folks now that are just on their phone Googling absolutely everything because they've lost that part of their brain. But they haven't lost it. It's there. It just hasn't been trained in a while. The training wheels are back on. But if we're constantly allowing our mind to just think for a moment and ask ourselves hard questions and do memory games and do things like that that cause our mind to work, we're allowing those wheels to turn again. We're flexing those muscles again so that we're able to lift heavier and take on more and more. The third one is one that is not only just so much fun, but one that is insanely good for the brain is to learn a new instrument. Because when we're learning a new instrument or we're learning tactile things, we're incorporating motor skills with our mind. And so I want you to think of when you were younger, if someone ever told you to rub your belly and pat your head, and I encourage you to try it right now, and then switching directions. It's really, really hard to do in the beginning. But as you get going and your mind starts to pick up on what you're doing, it gets easier. Another one is putting um, your left hand on your nose, your right hand over top on your ear, and then switching, 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 getting faster, getting faster. It's allowing motor skills and cross lateral abilities to cross over. It's allowing both sides of our brains to work at the same time which is a great exercise. Basically, all of this is exercises. How can we exercise the muscles of our brain as much as we exercise the muscles of our body? Because it's so important that we do that. The next one is one that is honestly so much fun to do, and that's to use your non-dominant hand to do things. You try eating a meal and writing and just getting dressed, doing things with your non-dominant hand and realizing how hard it is to do. But realizing that maybe at some point in your life, I hope this never happens, but you might be forced to use that hand. So it also practices gratitude. I'm so grateful I have my dominant hand, but how can I learn to use my other hand just in case, but also to learn a new skill? And it's not always pretty, but it's through the process that we're able to learn and also have fun with doing it. Because with all this, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be a way to just work ourselves harder, to get outside our comfort zone, get outside our norm and just expand our mind. The next one, which is huge and greatly, greatly impactful in the brain is reading. Reading both fiction and nonfiction so that we're able to get creative as well as to learn new things. Reading is a great way to also learn new words, which is my next one, expand your vocabulary. I love to hear new words and write them down. I learned a new word the other day that I have to write down the definition to, but it was something super, it was like dogma. It was a word dogma. And I loved the definition of what that was. And so I'm going to start a book that's just new words that I learned with definition. Because also as a podcaster, I want to be able to intensify my vocabulary so that I'm able to spread new awareness in new words and so that I'm not feeling like a broken record. And so expanding your vocabulary is a great way, a great way to grow your mind. Creating artwork, getting creative, doing coloring and drawing and scribbling and just Getting artwork is a great way that we can increase neuroplasticity and also just use our creative mind. Dancing. Dancing is a great way. Yoga, right? Yoga is also that connection of breath work with the mind, with the body, with movement, with flow, with energy. Yoga is a great way to expand our mind. And so I hope that those are all landing with you guys and that maybe one or two of them stuck out to you of ones that you want to try to do. And again, I encourage you to make it fun. Make it fun and exciting to know that you're able to rewire the brain, to rechange the brain, to expand neuroplasticity, and to become the best version of yourself. We put such a cap on ourselves because things are just so resourceful now. It's so easy to just 
Google something quickly and get the answer, but how are, how are you learning through that? Are you Googling something, plunking it in, and then if I asked you that question two days later, would you remember or would you have forgotten? Because again, neuroplasticity is the repetitiveness of learning over time that causes those chemical changes, that causes us to learn to adapt, to relearn something. And so in conclusion, I just want you guys to just reflect on your life at maybe how you've been with this. Did you know that this was something that was possible? Did you know that your brain is ever changing? Did you know that through this episode, so many neural pathways were being laid down? Are you eager and excited to go and begin to do the work for yourself? How do you feel about all this? Are you okay with having a fixed mindset? Are you okay with knowing that your potential is capped when you say that it's capped? Or are you recognizing that a growth mindset is so possible if you have the mindset to do it? This is the psychology behind knowing that it's possible, but knowing that you have to take action for that to actually happen. And I just want to thank you guys so, so much for tuning into this week's episode because psychology in the brain and just talking about is something that I'm very, very passionate about, but I had stemmed away from for a while because my last job really did burn me out and I recognized and I lost touch with how much I enjoyed it and I want to just spread that education through a different lens because I recognize that it is something I'm very passionate about and social work, when I was studying that and taking psychology courses, it was always so fascinating to me. And I will just say in hindsight, I was not good at psychology. I failed my first two psychology courses in university. And so I had to retake them in order to get my certificate. And so I've learned and relearned a lot about psychology and I want to begin to expand that to you guys and give the tactile reasons behind why we are the way that we are, why the why we think the way that we think. Because I think that if we have that psychoeducation and we have that background, it not only gives us the permission, but it gives us the awareness that it's actually possible. It's not just Jesse saying it, it's possible, go do it, but literally cognitively psychologically it is possible and it's possible for you so i hope you do some of these exercises i encourage you to even right now try the patting your head rubbing your belly one try the crossing the hands on the nose and the ear and just have fun with it encourage your coworkers to try it share this with someone right let's just begin to rewire our brain expand our brains grow as a collective grow as a society and begin to just push ourselves and get outside that comfortability Let's get comfortable being uncomfortable together. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning into episode 53 of Rewire to Inspire. I am so excited and looking forward to chatting with you next episode. Much love as always. Talk to you next time. Bye, you guys. Thank you all so, so much for tuning into today's episode of Rewire to Inspire. I absolutely love connecting with you all, so make sure you're following me on Instagram. I am at jessiebrown13. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to leave a review or share with someone you think would enjoy. I look forward to chatting with you all next episode. And remember, get out of your head and into your heart.